we can go ahead and solve a logistic differential equation using separation of variables. Let's do the following example. A country's population in millions is logistic. Satisfying dp dt equals k times p times 200 minus p. In 1960, which we'll call t equals zero, the population was 100 million and it was growing at a rate of 1 million people per year. Predict the population in 2020. We'll bring the P's over to the left and our DT over to the right. And then we'll integrate. And in spite of the prerequisites and stuff, we um don't use all that much calculus to material in this course. I think this example where we have to use partial fractions is the only time that a calculus to integration technique shows up. So if you're not very enthusiastic about stuff like that, there's no need to be concerned. But we'll do the partial fractions. We'll set this rational equation as the sum of a simpler rational expressions. And we'll multiply both sides by the numerator like this. And now we'll use the heavy side method, which says that this should be true for every value of p. So it should be true for p equals 200, which gives us 1 equals 200b. So B is one two hundredths, and it should be true for P equals zero, which gives us one equals two hundred A. So A is also one two hundredths. And our integral then becomes one two hundredths times one over P plus one two hundredths times one over two hundred minus p dp equal 
was the integral of k dt. Let's pull this one two hundredth out of the integral. And we get the following. And now we'll actually take some antiderivatives. The antiderivative of one over P is the absolute value. And for the moment, I'll include the absolute value. The natural log of the absolute value of P minus, because of this negative sign, the natural log of the absolute value of 200 minus P equals KT plus a constant of integration. Here's where we are so far. And let's get rid of both of these absolute values. And our justification for getting rid of this is obvious. Population cannot be negative. To get rid of this, why can't population be greater than 200? Well, here's where it's helpful for to know from the previous video how the logistic growth works. We've got extinction and we've got our carrying capacity and we have an initial value in here. And this initial value is just going to increase to carrying capacity. It isn't going to get past it. So since our initial value is in this region, we stay in this region forever. And 200 minus P is always positive. Now we'll multiply both sides of this equality by 200. What we do not or do, what we do or do not consolidate is admittedly a little arbitrary. If K is an unknown constant, 200 K is an unknown constant. Instead of writing 200 K, we could put a D or something, but we're not going to do that. On the other hand, an arbitrary constant times 200 is an arbitrary constant. And we keep writing it as a C. 
Now here's where our college algebra comes in for a test. Do we remember how to simplify this? One natural logarithm minus another natural logarithm is the natural logarithm of the quotient. And we want P ultimately, P equals something. So we certainly don't want our P is stuck inside this natural logarithm. Let's take the exponential of both sides. On the left, the exponential and the logarithm cancel out. On the right, an exponential of a sum is the product of the exponentials. And if C is an arbitrary constant, then E to the power of C is a positive arbitrary constant. Let's give that a name of its own. Let's call it D. And now if we can avoid making any silly mistakes, we're almost at the finish line. Multiply both sides by the denominator. And again, it's sort of arbitrary. I mean, 200 times an arbitrary constant is an arbitrary constant. But I have a goal in mind. There's a reason I'm writing this as 200d e to the 200kt minus p d e to the 200kt. Our ultimate goal looking ahead is to use these terms together in a simplification step. I could write 200 times D equals capital E or whatever, but I want to do some cancellation later on. Add this over here. P plus P times D times the exponential of 200 KT equals 200 times D times E to the exponential of 200 kt we are almost done only two steps left And the first step 
is prob the pretty apparent. We're going to divide both sides by this. P equals this exponential term. divided by this and now in a sense we're done we could if we left our answer I mean we're not done because we have specific goals other than solving the differential equation, but we're very close to being done with this step of the process. There is something that the book doesn't do, but which is very traditional to do, and that's to take this and divide the numerator and the denominator by it. And when we do that, this divided by this is one, this divided by this, gives us a negative 200 kT. And our very last little bit of simplification, if D is a positive constant, one divided by D is a positive constant. Let's just give it its own name. And we have solved the differential equation, at least up to a point. We need to use our initial condition to find this constant. And we need to use our initial condition to find this parameter. And then we can set the population equal, um, sorry, then we can set t equal to whatever and solve the actual problem. Here's our differential equation. Here's our solution so far. Here's the data we have. We could actually have found K as our very first step. At time zero, the derivative is one and the population is 100. In other words, at time zero, one equals equals k times the population times 200 minus the population and from that you know k. So take this one ten thousandth, plug it in here. The population is 200 divided by one plus this unknown times the exponential of negative point zero two t. And once again, using the fact that at 
time zero, the population is 100. We that P equal 100. When T is zero, this exponential is one. And we could solve for this, but maybe we can just see looking at, well, no harm in doing a few extra steps. If it keeps people from being confused, multiply both sides by the denominator, divide both sides by 100. Solve for E. And all I was going was saying before I did that is that you might be able to just look at this equation and see that capital E has to be one without doing any work. But the long road is now at an end. Year zero was, let me remind myself, year zero was 1960. We're asking for the population in 2020. So we let T be 60, and we plug that in, and we wind up doing this off camera, getting P is about 154. Remember that population is measured in millions. Going back to something I said earlier, between this video and the one with the fish in the lake, we've been doing some pretty exhausting calculations to this problems, not so much in the sense of using a lot of specialized techniques, but just in the sense that these problems are going on a bit in terms of how long they take to do. Um, Differential equations does sometimes have some quite lengthy problems, no way around that. I'll say that after one more section where we look at position, velocity, and acceleration without neglecting air resistance, that will be pretty much it for this type of problem. We'll move away from using calculus to solve differential equations to other techniques.